What's going on, beer friends? Welcome to another episode. It is summertime here in Southern California, and it is a hot one. So I have a bunch of hops in my freezer that I need to use up, and so today we're making a double dry hopped, double West Coast IPA. So if you're ready, stay tuned. <music> another episode beer lovers I'm Jeff I'm Mia and today we are brewing a double dry hopped West Coast double IPA um, I've been using a bunch of varieties of hops over the last few months playing with different flavors and now I'm noticing that they're just kind of aging out in my freezer so I said you know what let's just throw them all together and make a really tasty IPA so I enlisted the help of Mia I needed her strong girl arms to help me out so we just started the strike water. Now let's take a look at the ingredients. Alrighty guys, so it is time to mash in. Our strike water is at 168 right now. I'm gonna be pouring in the grains. Mia is gonna be using those buff arms to uh, stir everything in, make sure we don't have any clumps. I apologize ahead of time if you guys hear a barking dog this entire time. It's my neighbor's dog. He, he's really excited and wants to be part of the show. So, sorry about that, but here we go. Alrighty guys, so the mash in is ready to go. We are setting our timer for one hour, then it's time to Vorloff this, and then we're gonna sparge it. We'll see you in an hour. One hour later. Alrighty guys, so our mash in is done. It's time to Vorloff our wort. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna slowly pour out some of the wort into my little pot here, uh, and then filter it right back in from the top of the mash tun. Uh, this is to make sure that we clarify the wort and also make sure that we don't leave in anything that once we boil uh, creates some unpleasant flavor. So I'm going to do that right now. Basically, I just turn my little spigot on lightly and it'll slowly start to fill up. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this because I've done it in a lot of episodes, but basically what you're looking to do let so make sure that everything that comes out is just liquid. You don't want any of those like little granules or anything. So if you guys look in there, you can kind of see that it's got a bunch of little particulates. You don't want that. So basically, I'm just going to continue to cycle this out as soon as I fill it up. Pour it right back in the top here. The other thing that this does is it creates a nice little grain bed. Um, makes it a little bit easier for it to pour out clear once you've actually done it right. All we do is pour it back in and start all over again. So I'm going to do this probably, I don't know, 10 to 15 times. By then it should be getting pretty clear. Then I'm going to start uh, draining it out into our brew kettle. All right, kids. So next up is a thing called a fly sparge. Um, I heated up three gallons of sparge water to 170 degrees. My original mash is still draining into my brew kettle. So while that's draining, I'm actually gonna add the uh, sparge water right on top. So it's draining into the brew kettle down below. There's still 
mash water in there. We're adding the sparge water right on top. Some people have a really fancy setup, like little sprinklers and things that spread this beautifully and evenly. I ain't that fancy, uh, but thanks to Windsor Homebrew Supply, I tend to get my efficiency very high, so I'm not gonna complain. Doesn't matter how you get the job done, as long as you get the job done. So I'm gonna add these three gallons while everything drains in the brew kettle. And we'll see you guys when we actually get our wort up to a rolling boil. So we'll see you then. All right, everyone, we have reached hot break. Just a moment ago, there was a like a big marshmallow, light brown topping over this, but it's uh, it's broken to where now it's it's clear on top. And now that means we can add our hops. So what we have here is one ounce of citra. We're gonna add it at. Uh, the 60 minute. I'm going to put it over here so it stays contained and doesn't get all over the place. It's easier to take out of that. Smelling lovely. Alright kids, it's time for our second hop edition. This is 30 minutes into the boil. It is going to be a half ounce of citra. I know right now this sounds boring, but I promise things will get interesting as soon as we're done with the boil. Just dropping that in right now. I have this hop spider here. The whole point of that is to kind of hold in all the hop particles, make sure they don't mix in with the wort too much. So then when we put it in the fermenter, it just helps things a little bit, be a little bit clearer and uh, helps avoid getting some of the leafy matter uh, inside your actual beer. So. Anyways, 30 minutes in, our next hop edition is gonna be at 15 minutes. We got a few other things to add then, so we'll see you there. All right, we are at the 15 minute mark. I'm going to put some yeast nutrient and roll flop tap, and I'm gonna just throw it right here. It's just like yummy uh, Flintstone vitamins for your beer, if you will. Make sure it gets all that. of citra and I'm just going to pour that in here as we have been doing keep it consistent and now your favorite part and now my absolute favorite part is the wort chiller so we're going to place it into this section just to sanitize it kind of right yep just to kill whatever I just stuff it in there yep Get it in all nice and deep pack. All right. So I don't know how long we're going to do this. I guess I have to just hold this. We got 15 minutes left. I'm just going to hold this for 15 minutes and then have weird tan lines. So come on back and we'll show you the next step. Well, guys, after a few hours of literally sweating my balls off, they all gone. Uh, <laughs> It, it's been a really hot day. I mean, walking in and out of my house even still. I mean, I'm standing still, I'm breaking a sweat. It's been a hot day. Uh, luckily, we're done with the boil. We've now chilled down our wort to about 160 degrees. So it's time to add our whirlpool hops. I'm doing something called a hop stand where basically I'm not running my wort chiller for about 20 minutes when I add these hops and that's to give it time to really let those oils extract at one specific temperature. Now, if you guys want to take a look at what's in here, we got a lot of hops. Got a lot of hops, kids. So, just to run through it real quick for Whirlpool, I got a half ounce of Amarillo hops, I have an ounce of Citra hops, an ounce of Vic Secret, and two ounces of Sabro hops. This is a big hop stand. I haven't done one this big before, not even for my hazies, but I got a lot of hops that are probably gonna go bad in the next few months. And uh, so, you know what, screw it. Let's just go with it. I haven't seen anything where there is such a thing as adding too much hops. And I have a hop spider, so a lot of these particulates aren't gonna get in there. So I'm gonna add it into my hop spider. I'm actually not gonna whirlpool because it's just, I'm, I might whirlpool a little bit just to kind of try to stir some of those oils up periodically. But really, I'm just adding it in there at that 160 and that's gonna give it a chance to let those oils extract and let the flavors really 
come out. So here we go. Anyways, in 20 minutes, we are going to cool this down to pitching temperature, so we'll see you then. Hey guys, so guess what? We have chilled our wort down. It is time to put it into the fermenter, which we're about to do right now, and then I'm going to pitch the yeast. Fun stuff! So we're going to add the wort into the fermenter. I'm going to shake it up a little bit to kind of oxidize it. It's also going to oxidize a little bit when we pour it in. Uh, it's good to oxidize your wort, not good to oxidize your beer. So there's a difference. You oxidize it before you pitch the yeast, you're good. Actually helps with flavor and aroma. Afterwards, no, none of that, none of that. So anyways, we need both of our hands to do this. So here we go. Here we go. Miss America. Smells awful, still, this whole time. It's been gross. Whee! Okay, let's see, stop right there. It's yeast pitching time. Now, if I haven't said before, or if you haven't seen a previous homebrew episode, always make sure that you sanitize all your stuff after boiling your wort. Anything that your cooled down wort touches is at risk of infection unless you sanitize. So you're going to be pissed if you don't sanitize your stuff because your beer could end up like shit. And nobody wants a beer to turn out like shit. Anyways, I have my Imperial Flagship Ale Yeast here. And uh, I've never used this yeast strain before, but I have used Imperial. In fact, uh, my last hazy IPA that I did that came out beautifully was Imperial, so I know I can trust them. Anyways, uh, down the hatch it goes. Just like that. Just like that. Always make sure that you squeeze as much out of it as possible. There are billions of yeast cells in here. You want to make sure that you're utilizing every little bit of it. I typically make a starter for beers like this. I did not make a starter this time around because I literally picked up my ingredients yesterday. Um, this is kind of a last minute decision. Um, and so I didn't have time for a starter. But that's why this brand in particular is really great. Anyways, I am going to add the top on. Make sure it's nice and sealed. All right, now it's time to add the airlock. So anyways, brew day is done guys. This is going to sit in the fermenter at about 68 to 70 degrees for the next two weeks. Uh, I will be doing a couple dry hop additions in between, uh, which you guys will probably see. And uh, after the two weeks, it's going to be time to keg. And then probably 10 days later, it's time to drink. So I will see you at the first dry hop edition. Three days later. Hey guys, we're a couple days into fermentation and I just wanted to give you a quick little update. Uh, it has been hot as hell in California on the West Coast as a whole. Uh, it has been very, very hard to keep cool and my beer is suffering because of it. Um, I don't have a fancy setup with like a temperature controlled fridge for my fermenter. I'm just using a cooler that I throw ice packs into and I just try to 
get that temperature down to healthy fermentation. Um, unfortunately, you know, I've been struggling with that the last couple days. Uh, nothing too crazy. I'm hoping I don't have any crazy off flavors uh, in the final product, but at this point it's kind of out of my control. The best I can do is the best I can do. But speaking of which, since we are two days into fermentation, it's time to do our first dry hop edition. So here we have a hop bag filled with three ounces of hops. There's an ounce of Citra, an ounce of Vic Secret, and an ounce of Sabro hops. Uh, there's also some marbles in here. whole point of adding the marbles is to help weigh the bag down to make sure that the beer gets a hold of it all and it's not just floating on top. Um, everything's sanitized. Everything's ready to go. I'm not going to show you this next part because it's literally me just opening up the fermenter, dropping this in, and closing it right back up. But I will see you back in probably about a week or so for our second dry hop edition. Several days later. Hey guys, welcome back. It has been about 12 days since brew day. It's time for our second dry hop edition. So here I have an ounce of Citra, I have an ounce of Sabro, and an ounce of Vic Secret. This is our last hop edition. I'm throwing it right into the fermenter. I'm gonna let it sit for about three days and then it's gonna be time to keg. I'm doing this last edition to really get as much of the fresh hop oils out as humanly possible. So then when it comes time to tap, we're getting all that delicious hop flavor. So hopefully this works out. Again, I've really been battling the temperature, trying to make sure that it's at safe fermentable temperatures. You know, it, I can only do the best that I can with all this heat going on and without some kind of temperature controlled fermenter or temperature controlled refrigerator that I could put my fermenter in, but I'm hanging in there, hanging in there. So anyways, I'm gonna add these dry hops. We'll see you on kegging day. Welcome back guys. Today is kegging day. Uh, our beer is basically done fermenting. I checked the gravity. It finished out at 10.04. So the final beer ends up measuring out at 7.6%, which believe it or not was right on target. Even though my gravity targets were off, it kind of finished at the ABV that I wanted. Now, the real question is, how's it gonna turn out? We don't know yet. We gotta keg it, we gotta cold crash it, we gotta wait for it to carbonate, and then we'll try it. That'll happen pretty soon, probably in the next two weeks. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm sanitizing my keg in the sink. As soon as that's all sanitized and I clean my beer lines, I'm gonna go ahead and siphon this IPA into the keg where I'm gonna let it sit. So let's go ahead and get started. So kegging is done. Um, I don't know if I got a shot of me adding gelatin to the keg or not, but I did add some gelatin. I want to make sure that this beer is super clear or at least as clear as possible. Um, I rendered exactly five gallons, so awesome. Um, I'm excited. Uh, honestly, at this point, it's time for me to pack for my trip. And by the time I get back, this beer should be ready to drink. So we'll see you then. Several days later. Welcome back, beer lovers. Uh, the homebrew is finally ready. Uh, this has been sitting in the keg carbonating for about two weeks now. And uh, it's time to finally test it and yeah. see how it tastes. So anyways, just kind of want to review the process with you guys real quick. We want to dive into this before the head dies. But this is a double dry hopped West Coast style IPA. Um, 7.6% was its final ABV, 
which is right on target of what I wanted. My gravity readings were off, but the end product worked out. So anyways, let's go ahead and dig into it. Cheers, man. Cheers. I mean, obviously, it's not quite a West Coast clear. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Uh, me and what I'm known for is if I'm trying to brew a clear beer, it comes out hazy. And if I try to brew a hazy beer, it comes out clear. So it is what it is. I'm going to attribute it to uh, just the double dry hopping. Yeah, that And makes the a lot of fact sense. that yeah. I don't have a high quality filtration system like a lot of breweries do. That's true. And it's only been sitting in the keg for two weeks. We gave it more time. Some of that stuff would fall out of suspension and probably clear up quite nicely, but tired of waiting. So let's dig in. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's pretty tasty. <laughs> that's a mighty fine beverage, if I do say so myself. All right. So... <clears throat> I definitely don't remember the last West Coast that I've had of yours specifically. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, okay, so I'm trying to be as critical as I can, even though I love you. <laughs> I personally would probably want it a little drier, like maybe more, like a, a more of a crisp finish, because um, the up front you get tons of like. Yeah, kind of fruit salad-y <laughs> notes going on. There's a lot of really fun, uh, just hop flavors. Uh, the aroma is really nice. Uh, definitely lots of just like, not super tropical fruity per se, but you definitely get good citrus, good, you know, sweetness from it. I get a little bit of earthy, not quite dank, but like... Grass and pine. Yeah, you get that grassiness for sure. Yeah. Um, that's nice. Um, that's kind of why I enjoy... West Coast IPAs, because you get those fun flavors more so in a West Coast than you do hazies. You know, that tends to get muddled. You don't really have super earthy hazy IPAs. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while they come out, but it's more few and far between, right? So thinking back to some of my favorite West Coast IPAs of all time, they always have this super crisp finish. Um, obviously, one of those is probably like Pliny the Elder, right? And it's I'm not going to say it's unfair to maybe compare judge this by, to Elder, yeah. <laughs> but I also feel like at this point, I kind of have to push it a little bit, you know? Like, hey, you you have a couple years under your belt of brewing. I think I can say, like, hey, get better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Because it's like, it's tasty. I, I think we all know now that you're very capable of making a tasty beer. Now I want you to make a <laughs> great beer. Yeah. I got you. And, and challenge <laughs> accepted. Um, right. This is a real encouragement for me to just keep brewing, especially when it comes to IPAs. I just feel like I have a lot of potential where this is. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's tasty. And I don't know if I told you about this, but I know in this video, whoever's watching this probably saw me during the fermentation process talk about the fact that it was a real struggle with this beer to keep mm. it at the right temperature. Um, you know, this type of beer you want to ferment at about 68 to 72 degrees. And I just, I couldn't get it like below about 74. I mean, mm. it basically okay. sat at about 74 okay. the whole time. Luckily, I mean, it's not like it went crazy, you know. Sure, yeah. But even still, to be honest with you, I think I'm, I'm even more... Uh, pleased with this beer because I was really anticipating some some off flavors coming through and I mean I'm I try to be as critical as I can of my own beers as well I feel like we're all kind of our own worst critic in a way and I that was the first thing I looked for is oh god is there gonna be some acetaldehyde in here like am I gonna get pumpkin guts or something and I don't and I'm no, really really yeah. happy with that um when it comes to the clean finish, I'm actually kind of surprised. I, I mean, guys, by the way, this is a clean finish. Jacob's talking about, like, crisp like that, you know, when you have, like, the cold, freshest IPA you've ever had, and you drink it, and it's like that. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, it's that yeah. that he's looking for. Right. This doesn't quite have it, but it's still a pretty darn clean finish. It finished at 10.02, so, I mean, I couldn't get mm -hmm. much lower than that. Okay. Uh, maybe if I pop some champagne yeast in there. But I think also it kind of has to do with carbonation. 
It could, yeah. I, could. I know that that's probably something I need to update with my homebrew setup is really get something where I'm getting more effervescence out of my beers because okay. I've noticed yeah. that a lot of my homebrews just don't quite have the tiny bubbles that I normally like. Okay. So okay. I think that's something there. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I tell you what, guys, I don't think I've ever had a beer with the combination of Citra, Vic Secret, and Sabro Hops. And I'm loving it. This is, it's a great little combo. Um, the Sabro creates this nice kind of silky mouthfeel. Gives you like, a, just not not like a strong coconut presence, but like just that slightly sweet, you know, a, I don't know, coconut reminds me of milk a little bit. Like okay. a sweeter milk. Like condensed milk in a way, but maybe not as strong. Something like that. I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. But I, I definitely get some of that in there, but then the, the Lupo Max Citra comes through mm. and you're getting beautiful citrus notes, orange, lemon peel, grapefruit, a lot of that kind of stuff going on. And then the Vic Secret for me, I get towards the back end and it's like that white wine grape. Mm. So I actually okay. get like the white wine grape skins as the finish. Mm. Like I kind of feel like the like the bitterness of like that pine earth mixing with grape skins. And I don't know, I just, I like it. I, I honestly could pound this beer and I know it's my beer, so of course I can pound it. But at the end of the day, like this is not a, a dumper at all. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. What I was also, <clears throat> what just kind of clicked in my head, this is a double dry hopped beer and you have avoided completely any uh like dry hopping bitterness like there's none of that like yeah the yeast did a good job that sting or anything like that that you get from like some especially for hazies but i think anything double dry hopped if you just stays in the dry hopping for too long you just get this really kind of gross bitterness that's not really that great sometimes you can ignore it and sometimes you're just kind of like eh, this kind of ruined it um none here I, at all i will so. say I can thank my Hawaii trip for that. Oh, because really? <laughs> I basically was running out of time when it came to my double dry hop. That's funny. I, I did my second dry hop edition like two or three days before kegging, which was probably the perfect amount of time for it. I didn't let it sit for a week, which is kind of what Jacob's right. alluding to is the longer you let it sit, you start to get a little bit more uh, hop creep is what they call it. Right. Mm. So I didn't get that because I kegged it like literally two days later because I didn't have a choice. Otherwise, it would have sat here at 90 degrees while I'm in Hawaii. So, <laughs> right, yeah. You know, I didn't have too much of an option. But yeah, all in all, I would say, damn, it worked out. Yeah, I think definitely taking it off the dry hop when you did was a really good call because, like I said, none of that hop creep, which is something that I. I do kind of look for in anything that is double dry hopped because that's a good sign of like, do you really know what you're doing or are you just kind of really hoping Dumping that the a bunch hops of hops in there, yeah. do all the work for you? Mm -hmm. So that's good job there. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Well, guys, that's going to do it for our grain to glass tutorial of this double dry hopped West Coast IPA. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up. Share with your friends. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps us a lot in the rankings, and uh, honestly, it encourages us to make more episodes like yeah. this. Uh, professional brewers, too. Look, give me some love in the comments. Like, I'm not a pro. I'm here as a five-year home brewer, still learning every single day. Like, if you have some positive feedback for me, ways I can make my process better, please let me know. Uh, if you want to troll me, you can troll me, too. I, I don't care. Just, I want to be better. And for those of you who are maybe new to home brewing, you have some questions, put those in the comments too. I will for sure reply. Even if I don't know the answer to your specific question, I can ask some people that can get you the answers. And maybe if there's a really good home brewer watching this episode, they might respond to your question as well. The goal of episodes like this is for me to improve, to help others improve and to encourage people to make their own beer. So yeah. it's all about beer, guys. Let's let's do it together. We're a community. Let's cheer each other on. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jacob. And we'll see you next time on Let's, let's Have, have some, some Beer. Cheers.
Cheers. If you're anything like us, you've had way too many hangovers and could definitely do with a get out of jail free card. Uh, well, we got sent some packets that claim to be our your get out of hangover free card.